This episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls is brought to you by Apparition Sense, an outdoor and sporting goods company based in Dillinger, Pennsylvania. All of their scents developed and hand bottled with strict attention being paid to every detail. Contact them today at 724-998-7646 or check them out at apparitionsense.com. 100% lethal or your money back guaranteed. Get a hold of them today at 724-998-7646 or check them out at apparitionsense.com. All right, guys, welcome to another episode of On the Limb with Nature's Voice Game Calls. Tonight we have uh, father and son team here, Shane Coyle and Mike Coyle, as well as the host there, Michael, and myself. How you doing, Michael? And guys, how you guys doing? Doing good, Dan. How you doing, buddy? Doing good. Thanks for having us. Yes, thank you. Yeah, it's our pleasure. Glad you guys could get on. We can shoot the shoot the bull a little bit here. Yeah, Dan, this is uh, first time introduction for you, man. I hear you because I couldn't get it done. <laughs> first thirty seconds, we had two blooper reels. <laughs> <laughs> hey, this is twenty twenty three, man. We're, we're know. changing things Jeez. a little bit, you know. So yeah, like Dan said, we have uh, Ghost eight hundred two on tonight. Uh, Shane Coyle and Mike Coyle. Mike goes by the Fox. We'll get to that here in a little bit. Uh, they're from Addison County, Vermont. Uh, it's a little, little town called Ferrisburg, about a half an hour south of Burlington, Vermont. Tonight, we're just going to, we had them on to go over the history behind 802 Outdoors, what 802 Outdoors does for the hunting community and how they support, you know, hunting heritage there in their area, um, land management and things that they do for the fellow hunter, the neighbor, um, different outdoorsmen there that they're um, friends with and things and uh their hunting community and how their hunting traditions and tactics are different in you know that far north compared to us here in the pretty deep south as we would call west virginia <laughs> you know we're we're pretty far south compared to them so um guys we'll just start off with uh how uh how you guys doing and uh where's the fox come from in mike's name again thank you for having us um <coughs> Shane and I got the fox here with me. Um, just go over a quick little brief history here. Uh, probably what seven, eight years ago now. Yeah, it got to be at least eight. Yeah. We uh, kind of started out here in the woods. Kind of gets a little slow once in a while, so we started taking videos when cell phones became a thing and sending them back and forth just to kill time. Uh, a handful of us just kind of be funny and whatnot, and uh, decided we might as well start filming and trying to do some self-film of us and we had a different name that we were going by called redneck hunting and posting that on youtube and facebook and stuff kind of portrayed the wrong i guess the wrong what we we're trying to look at look like i guess you look up redneck hunting and a bunch of other stuff that had nothing to do with what we were into kind of would pop up yeah. uh so we've been hunting this one yeah, deer I can imagine for, that. yeah so we were hunting this one deer for quite a few years watching him on the cameras and uh, we decided, what did we call him? He was a ghost. He was he was the phantom. He, uh, we hunted this deer for three years, successful pictures and whatnot. We even, we even nailed him down to, to times he was going to be in the area. And <laughs> heck, bow hunting come along, and we said, uh, you know, sharpen up our broadheads. And, and heck, we, second, third day, we ought to be able to have his deer no problem. We got him patterned so good. And honest to God, you'd see that thing coming. Watch him, watch him. You get the excitement past you. You draw back, you anchor in, and it was just like he'd disappear. He'd turn into a squirrel or something. We started joking. (laughs) And uh, we got to where we were going down looking for tracks, thinking the alien ship come took him away or something. (laughs) And uh, and then he just disappeared. Uh, Rifle season come, we got, what, one, two... Couple Dude. couple photos of him. Yeah, and, you you got to draw up on him with your rifle. Same. Yep. And uh, so so we said, well, this this redneck hunting thing ain't ain't going the way we thought it was. There's uh, you know, there's other companies out there selling things called the same name, and and there's uh, there's rednecks with their hats turned on sideways and whatnot. And we we decided that that was fun amongst us, you know, when we started out, but. Uh, if we were going to go forward, then 
then maybe we should do something a little bit different. And we both looked at each other and said, ghost. And we're in the 802. 802 is the area code for Vermont. So nice, like, nice. That's that's a good story on the start of that, man. That's that's really cool. Like like you said, redneck hunting. That's I'd say that that that's a broad band. I know. Yeah. Shoot. Yeah. Fifteen years ago, hell no. It's been it's been longer than that. It's been probably when I was eighteen. I started my first email address was Redneck Hunter, so I can just imagine how how many other things are out there like that. Yeah, yeah. So yeah, speaking of uh, your all's past name there, Redneck Hunting, I can only imagine how many different things out there. It's you know that's in that category, and I can see why you guys would want to change. Um, one of the things that we also wanted to talk about tonight is uh, Ghost Eight Hundred Two out. Um, how you guys support the hunting community and the hunting heritage, not only there in Vermont, but you guys have hooked up with us here in West Virginia, and it's it spreads out um, further than Vermont. So tell us a little bit about that. Hey, uh, who wants to go? You want to go? I can go. Go ahead, start. <clears throat> uh, hunting, hunting heritage, and what do we do for the community? Uh, we we try to, to, first of all, we try to attend a few uh, 3D archery shoots. Uh, which are support uh, different causes in the community. Uh, it's about fun. Uh, each each time that we go to one, we we try to bring a different kid with us or someone that may have never been before. And and the funniest darn thing is uh, the next time you go, you you call them, see if they need a ride, and now they're all set. And you get there, and they got somebody, and they brought a friend with them. <clears throat> you know, and and uh That's awesome. and we do the same thing with with hunting and fishing. Uh my when I was a young fella, ten years old, uh I hunted my first year with my dad with with a rifle and no bullets. Uh just uh just to make sure that I could carry it through the woods properly and and uh and when I grew up we, we weren't allowed the red riders, you know, the BB guns 'cause uh 'cause those were toys and, and guns weren't necessarily toys uh uh, we had cap guns and you played cowboys and indians uh so growing up that's that's what i grew up with and and i tried to carry it uh i've got three sons and out of the three two hunt and fish um uh, i tried to carry it to them try to do the same thing that uh that my dad and granddad did for me uh, yeah, definitely. And 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 we try to promote it uh, with with other families and kids. You know, it, uh, the hunting blind was the best thing since sliced bread. When when you're bringing kids out, especially, <laughs> I, I don't know what the temperatures get down to there, but uh, around here it it affords you a lot of mistakes, and it affords you a longer time in the woods, even if you're even if you're just watching squirrels and and birds and stuff to to teach a child to get away from the tv nowadays and get out into the woods and just walk around uh, uh when when shane was a young fella here we we'd walk through the woods and pick out tracks just to see where they led and what they were and uh and he's a pretty darn good tracker now and and, uh, and i've done that with with my nephews we've got uh, another go Sato two member that this started out real young with, with myself and then with Shane. Uh, but we've got some from family friends um, and and folks that, that we might not have ever met um, because of this. And it's about it's about getting youngins out. You know, there's there's a, a, a kind of a I don't know off color joke I guess you'd call it a comment made in. In Vermont this year, there's there's over a hundred thousand rifles walking through the woods and and through the woods and ain't ain't one of them did any wrong. You know, I, I honestly think <laughs> that if uh, if conservation and and proper technique and and uh, the the right way to do things was taught, then there'd be a lot less of this violence. You know that we're seeing nowadays. Um, oh yeah, definitely. Uh, on, I mean, when y'all probably remember when, when we, when I went to school, 
it was nothing to go duck hunting before you went to first class, you know, and, and you left your shotgun in the back window of the truck mm-hmm. and you never locked it, <laughs> you know? Yep, yep. It's not that many years ago, you know, and so what we do for the community is is try to teach some ethics, try to teach the proper ways to do things, uh, proper proper ways, not just hunting, but what are you going to do in the woods where we're both on fire rescue, we're backland certified. Um, what are you going to do if you fall down, and break your ankle? You know, everybody's going to say, I'll just use my cell phone. Well, uh, golly, there's, there's places in the United States and beyond that phone ain't going to do you no good. You got to learn how to build a fire and you got to learn how to dig in for the night in case you're going to have to. First of all, you're going to have to learn how to take care of your, your injury, especially if, oh, if yeah, it's a yeah. trauma injury. You know, so we try to teach the basics and and go over. It. Yep, absolutely. Yeah, that's that's awesome. It seems <clears throat> like you guys are talking, doing that. It seems like a lot more people, organizations like yourself, are pushing more towards that now because I think they're seeing that the kids just don't seem interested because they don't have that option. Nobody's their their parents may not hunt or their their grandpa may have hunted, but he's too old now or whatever. But it's great that you guys are stepping up and other pl- people like that are stepping up to, to give these kids an opportunity. Yeah. And that's kind of one of our big pushes is kind of get the youth and even women. Um, you yeah. don't see a lot of women in the sport and Absolutely. we try to, especially now, like with archery and whatnot, they make bows that you can tune so good that my soon to be four year old could be shooting it. <laughs> um, <clears throat> so there's ways around it and ways about getting everybody kind of out into the outdoors and learning about the land and kind of where we all came from. Um, just kind of piggyback on to what the Fox had said, uh, kind of pushing to get more involved. Cause I'm, I kind of run our Facebook and social media stuff, but we push a lot of, we try to do some giveaways and whatnot throughout the seasons to try to get youth involved. So we have a few youth seasons, so we'll do like a, a giveaway. The youths will send in their videos and their pictures and we'll kind of amongst a group of us pick and it's always so hard every year that we've done them so far yeah it is but have them send a video in is with about their hunt and the stories and what got them into what they're doing and um kind of award them a prize that way whether it's some swag from us or something from one of our awesome supporters and sponsors and yep. which gets them more involved into it because they get maybe this awesome pot call from nature's voice or some archery uh arrowheads from vip broadheads or whatnot um bowstring or a new bowstring from marchery shack so we kind of we try to get them get them involved in a lot of different ways um they do and again we're not we don't just hunt we do fishing and whatnot so there's fishing derbies that go on locally and we try to make our appearance there to kind of show and then of course we've got a few youngsters in our crew which also shows others that hey this can be done and if he can do it i can try to do that and be that too so I think that really helps around here because, like you said, a lot of kids either don't have it or just weren't shown anything. So all they know is sit at home and play their video games or they're afraid yeah. to go outside, I guess. <laughs> yeah, that's that's one of the things that uh, really, you know, kind of geared us towards you all about three or four years ago when you all teamed up with us, you know, and uh, you all was mentioning, you know, how you all support the kids in the outdoors and things like that. You know, that's a big, uh, big thing that nature's voice supports. And we want to continue that with who we partner with. And we appreciate you guys doing that. And, you know, just, uh, being the, the so-called father figure there to raise them up in the traditions and things like, you know, we've done before. So yeah, I just, uh, think it's really great that you all continue that hunting heritage and, uh, keep those kids involved in the woods. Cause you know, that's the future of our, our hunting sport and our tradition. So, um, we appreciate you guys doing that. And we, we really appreciate the, uh, the support from you guys as well. And we try to, of course, promote you guys in any way we can with the, uh, with the calls and the podcasts. Um, again, yeah, we, thank you. Yeah, definitely. Even while we're in the woods, we like taking, taking different pictures and adding the calls in there and such. And I think it's a good idea yes yeah you all have done a great job doing that we used a couple of them this evening there to uh advertise this uh, recording on facebook so yeah absolutely so tonight our salute to valor we're gonna honor uh 
Jim Coyle. He was born and raised in Addison County, Vermont. Jim served in the United States Coast Guard from 1965 to 1972. He completed seven years of service for the Coast Guard where he was a he was on, I'm sorry, a cutter vigilante and he'd done two tours of duty to Vietnam. He was awarded several medals, but those medals were unknown, so we can't really go into what he was awarded. He was honorably discharged in 1972. So we we thank you for your service, and we appreciate your tours of Viet- to, to Vietnam. Yes. Thank you, Jim, for your service. You know, that's uh, one of the things that we love to do on our podcast, and, you know, this happened to be uh, Mike's father that served, so uh, we were discussing it there before we started the podcast, and he can uh, tell you a little bit more about that since uh, that's his father. Yeah, he, he never talked a lot about it. He was pretty proud of of what he did. He was a coasty. Uh, my godfather actually was was his uh, bunky, as they used to call each other, just across the way and served together. And and uh, it, that family lives down Enfield, Connecticut. But uh, some of the stories, once they'd get the beer cans around the table and the cards going when we got together as kids are, are pretty cool. Yeah, I bet. I mean, I love hearing those stories from you know <clears throat> different yeah. veterans that that uh, have served and has been able to come back home. You know, the reason why we do this is because many veterans give their lives every day for our freedom. Yeah, and for us to do the things that we love to do, just like this podcast, to have the freedom to go out and hunt and fish and to be able to do the things without restrictions. You know, we don't think of it in small aspects like that, but the freedom that we have is all because of our military and service personnel. So, Jim, thank you, sir, for your service, and we sure appreciate it. So uh, one of the other things that we wanted to talk about real quick, uh, then I'll have Dan go into the last topic there, um, our land uh, management and things like that. You know, we were talking before we started the podcast about how you uh, neighbors just ain't like neighbors used to be, you know. You used to know your neighbor. You used to go check on them if they wasn't coming outside to get the paper in the mornings or, you know, you didn't see them get the mail in the afternoon. You'd, you'd go check on them to see, hey, something's up, you know, or you just didn't see them out in the yard. But um, you guys help fellow hunters there, outdoorsmen and different uh, neighbors and things. And in your community, you all help, you know, manage the land. So tell us a little bit about that. Yeah, so locally here, myself and the Fox and a couple others hunt on our old family farmland, uh, which is a couple hundred quite acres. a few acres here still that we're luckily and fortunate to be able to have because, again, the neighbors aren't the neighbors we used to have, and there's more and more posted signs going up throughout around everywhere here in the state, so it's getting harder and harder. So one of our big things is to be stewards of the land, um, and that goes with going into your hunting areas and trimming out your trails so you can get to it easily and not tripping and falling on branches when it's dark out and making pathways for the deer to get to and from their waterways and their bedding areas and kind of helping funnel them into where your stand is or your blind. Um, and even like turkeys trying to get habitat areas for turkeys. And here in Vermont, years ago, they uh, banded baiting. So you can't uh, run feeders and what we can do is a food plot is kind of our, our way around that. Um, so basically just stewarding that and tending to our food plots and our waters and trying to assist others and showing others how to properly do things like that and go through and trim off some trees down low. So they grow sprouts for the, the yearlings and stuff to eat off from and, and getting in the deer herds more. If you want to add on a little more. Yeah. Building, <clears throat> building, building natural funnels. Um, I know down south, out west, they do it a lot with uh, fences and gates and such, and you know, we do it with with briar bushes and pickery ash and and uh, thorn bushes and such, and and uh, just cut yourself a ATV trail through there and funnel trails in from the from the bedding area to the to the meadows or you know, and it's it's not all about just hunting; it's it's about helping out the helping out the neighbors, like Mike said earlier, you know, helping them cut some of their firewood up for the winter or helping them set some lines for, for the sugar bush or whatnot, or maybe even go down and boil a little bit. You know, it's, 
It's about sometimes it's just about sitting around a wood stove and and chatting, you know, uh, having yeah, having definitely. a cup of coffee with the elders. You know, it's sure absolutely. Our, our motto, our motto isn't about uh, about the kill. It, it's never been about hunting. To me, has never been about the kill. It's always been about the adventures and and the memories that you make. And we could sit here for for hours and talk about some childhood memories and such, probably all four of us, you know. And then it's those things that you remember. You know, you don't remember that pair of Nikes that, that you did or didn't get when you're 12, 13, but I bet you remember what the weather was, and I bet you remember exactly what happened when you when you pulled the trigger or, or let the string go on your first buck, you know. Yep, absolutely. Exactly. Another thing we hadn't really talked yeah. about that yep. that uh, kind of goes along with the management of the land and and uh, and whatnot was the uh, oh shoot now I just lost my train of thought. <laughs> I'm sorry, <laughs> sorry. Give me a second here. That's what happens when you get older? You, yeah, you can move on. I had a good good step to talk about here too. And <laughs> yeah, the other the other thing we we like to talk about with kids is is safety in the woods. I know I touched on it a bit earlier, but uh, tree stands with the Walmarts everywhere, these double double ladder stands are 160 bucks. You can buy them all day long and and they come with a fair, come with a fair harness, but do you know how to use it? And are you using it every time or just sometimes? You know, it's it's those things that we try to try to teach and train and and with the other world that we live, uh, the two of us um, every time we go out, it's for an emergency that we didn't cause. But you got to be able to protect yourself while you're out there, because maybe nobody else is going to come find you for a bit. You know? Yeah. Yeah. Absolutely. Go ahead. All right. Um, the fact that we're kind of trying to do all this is, as folks who have 40 hour plus jobs during the week, and we're only getting weekend time to kind of do some of this stuff, and I guess. I guess we're guilty as it, but we call some of them the weekend warriors and whatnot, but that's kind of all we, we've got to do because we've got to be able to make a living to keep the roof over our heads. And we're not one of those TV shows where they're, they're I guess, hunting in a fence area, so to speak, and whatnot. We're really, really having to work the land and get the stuff to work out for us to be able to harvest something if we're lucky to do that on our weekend hunts. And if we're lucky, maybe we'll get a week off for for rifle season or whatnot, but it's, I mean, it's hard. We're, we're regular old folks and kids that are going to school. And so that's kind of something we really try to try to show is that we're, we're just a we're regular old people here trying to make a living and do, do what we love to do. Yeah. You can, uh, you can be on a buck yeah. and you can roost some turkeys and ready to go the next morning. And at uh, four thirty in the morning, the mm-hmm. fire tone goes out yeah. and you're gone, you know, <laughs> Yeah. Oh, yeah. Yep. So speaking into into that aspect of things, you know, how's your what's what's the how's your tactics differ, and what what's your hunting traditions like up there, and more in the north compared to what we would have, you know, down here in the south. The difference is from us to you guys down south, and um, I think one of the big things to start. I've already kind of touched on it, but I know like Ohio and. Some spots of Pennsylvania, I'm not sure how it works, honestly, in Virginia, uh, but would be feeding. Um, I, Ohio and whatnot, they can have their corn piles out and they can hunt over the, the corn and stuff like that. So I think as far as the baiting and whatnot goes, it's kind of, we got to do it naturally up here uh, in, the, in the Northeast where we're working the funnels and figuring out where they're going to be bedding down so we can get in there in the mornings and work our food plots throughout the years. Um, so it's good for deer, turkey, and all the other wildlife that we're seeing around here. Uh, that would be one of the big things, I think, that's really kind of changed changed everything up here anyway in the Northeast. Because uh, years ago, that was allowed. You could have a feeder and you could do stuff like that. But they've kind of, with the, uh, the different diseases and whatnot going around, um, they kind of put a stop to that. Uh, as well as right into ba- or using scents and whatnot. We're not allowed to use natural natural deer scents uh, and deer urines and <clears throat> the licks that you see advertised on TV. And we've got to use a synthetic, which to me, I guess I'd rather just try to do it without. Um, 
because some of it you open it up and I don't know it, it's kind of like down dish soap. Yeah. Um, but so that would be another real big thing I think that's different from us to you. Um, the uh, the herd account that's very hard and I think you could talk to any hunter around this area or any hunter that hunts in the Northeast um, in New England. The deer the, the herd's getting better, but it's hard. You have to hunt. Like really hunt up here to be able to harvest. You might hunt. And, you might hunt four days and not see a deer at all. You might hunt the <clears> whole season and not see a deer at all. There's some people that have that have hunted, uh, you know, the old Native American uh, saying for for a uh, bad hunter is vegetarian. Um, there's a lot of those around. You know, they just uh, you, you don't have that much time to hunt and because the season's so short and and people have to work they don't get out and and uh scout uh they don't have the opportunity or they don't have the land availability you know that's the downside sure a lot a lot of them guys getting getting that tag soup are they making some tag soup yeah yeah, yeah. cry baby soup yeah yeah and then i think <laughs> cry baby soup i like that oh <laughs> uh, and then with turkey hunting we noticed years ago i got into it really pretty heavily when I was just getting into hunting. Uh, there was something about waking up in the morning, hearing those those peepers, and then that first gobble really kind of got your adrenaline rolling. But then you started seeing a lot of turkeys around because they started really doing well, and the winters weren't terrible, so they were making it through the winters and showing themselves in the fields, which made everybody become a turkey hunter. <laughs> a road hunter. So it became hard, and the pressure got put on, and the birds are kind of more scarce and don't go out in the open as much. So you're hunting deep in the woods. And again, it's, I mean, you really got to hunt around here to, to harvest. You're not able to, able to pick your deer and go in the next morning and shoot it. <laughs> now talking, talking Turkey, do you guys have, like, we have massive issues with coyotes devastating our Turkey yeah. population. You guys have a lot of issues with coyotes <laughs> up in your neck of the woods. We do. We got a lot of coyotes. And I think the big thing now is the uh, cats and whatnot. Bobcats are really kind of getting getting to be a pretty big deal around here. For a while around our area, we were pretty locked down on the coyotes. Um, again, when all the neighbors were friends and we knew everybody, and we kind of had a thing where as soon as deer season was over, we were we were hunting coyote all winter. Um, and we had it down to a pretty good – I mean, we had them right down to the, the science of where they were going to be and what they were doing and knocked the herd down pretty good. But it's starting to definitely gain – and uh, you hear them on a nice night all over the place. So I think that's definitely put an impact on the on the turkeys here. Yeah, with with housing, it's harder to harder to shoot those long shots. Like we used to we used to throw money in a hat and see you could shoot over two hundred yards at one shot and drop a yoke type thing. Um, it's getting harder to do that around here. Um, and then you've got uh, you've got groups. Uh, we've got some friends that, that hunt with with dogs. Uh, hunt bear and coyote, and uh, and you've got uh, a population of people that lived in the city, we'll say, moved to Vermont, and and they just think that's so abusive and wrong um, that they've started a coalition. Um, we even had uh, we even had you know you got your big buck club a lot of times you you got your your buck lottery whoever shoots the biggest one wins. Yeah, uh, we did that with coyotes around here because there were so many and uh and people stepped up and and said you know the the coyote was here before the man and of course if you do your history you, you know that's not true the wolf was but not the coyote you know and and so it's we we play both sides of the coin unfortunately because of of uh of of the i guess you want to call sprawl you know the urban sprawl we could say um, you, you gotta, you gotta know your target even more than, than years past. That's always been a rule and, a and something that, that we teach from day one, but, uh, you, you really gotta know the advantage to, uh, the Vermont laws the last few years with the horn restrictions, and that's a whole nother conversation. Um, uh, you're hearing fewer repetition. You're hearing one shot, uh, which is good because that means people are looking, paying more of attention. Yeah, that's definitely a thing. I mean, that's crazy that uh, it's like that. Um, 
what is the most respected season up north? I mean, up in the northeast, as far as you guys are, uh, we talked some there before the podcast, and we were talking about turkey and deer, but uh, are those the most seasons that people hunt, or does it go into, like, your waterfowl and your uh, your small game, like rabbit hunting? So I'd say probably whitetail and turkey are, are two biggest seasons around here that bring others in and whatnot. Um, recently, I've noticed... Because they're in uh, opening of rifle around here. That's opening of uh, goose. Yeah, so like we were saying, the uh, waterfowl has kind of really picked up uh, migratory bird hunting. So I think that would probably be number three as far as our kind of big hitters here in Vermont. Uh, so yeah, turkey, whitetail, and the migratory birds. Uh, there's a lot of small, like rabbit and squirrel, partridge, uh they're not really, they kind of, a, I think, a fill-in for the folks that are still out and got that itch. But mostly, I know like us here, we'll go into the archery and start shooting 3D and doing the tournaments and whatnot. So it kind of takes up our time there with that. But Kids yeah. just ain't the way they used to be either. That uh, squirrel hunting meant that you were a young man. You were able to get out in the woods and start start shooting some squirrel. That was, uh, that was your entrance into scouting for for bow season oh yeah yeah that's for sure i mean i know that's where I know, I know that's where i started my son out i mean uh you know we started uh i started him in the woods when he was four years old and he was carrying a red rider bb gun with him and that was just f- so that he could just shoot around and play around while he's in the woods and that was before he could even hunt but i i wanted him to to get started young and at a young age so that he could get used to setting in the woods and learn to be patient and to learn to wait for those things that are to come and just be a part of the you know the environment and uh it's i think it's really done him well not only in hunting but in life in general i mean it's it's a life lesson yeah for sure <clears throat> absolutely you know just same same with my children you know i got pacey into it at a young age carter's starting to get out in the woods with me and you know we i don't know if you got to see that but my daughter finally connected on her first deer this year so that's huge huge accomplishments man it's it's great to get them kids out there and get them learn about it and teaching them about the trees different types of trees what this leaf goes to and what this nuts from and all that yeah i know myself we were uh one story that kind of sticks out in my head was the uh fox order saying turkey but i got another one in my head where we were talking earlier about the archeries and 3d shoots and whatnot when i was younger he was still doing the outdoor shoots we had a local course down the road here that he would go to frequently and uh decided it was time to bring me bring me along for the walk and that way i could understand what he's doing and maybe get me into flinging some arrows and we're walking through the trail and next thing you know i turned around i probably jumped i don't know three feet in the air and i was not much taller than that myself I turned and looked, and there's a bear standing on its two back legs looking right at me. <laughs> I didn't realize it was a 3D target at that age. I thought a bear was in the woods coming after me. <laughs> so it's memories like that as a young kid that kind of get you thinking. I've got two young ones myself, and Winston's three right now. I had him on my back on a backpack early bow season this year, walking through the woods and teaching him how he's got to be quiet and look through the woods at the birds and different things and whatnot just to kind of get the ball rolling early. Yeah, definitely. Sure is. So, uh, what, uh, what, what's your guys' plans with Ghost 802? What, you, what's the future looking for for this year? You guys got any big plans for you guys this year? So it's still early, or in the early stages here. But our one of our big things is to try to get to a lot more uh, on the off seasons, get to a lot more outdoor shoots and stuff this summer to try to get us more exposed. Um, trying to get more kids involved again, of course. I hate to say this and use this as an excuse because that's kind of what the excuse across America has been. But COVID really kind of slowed us down because a lot of the things, our outdoor shows, our whitetail unlimited banquets, our 3D shoots, indoor and outdoor, all kind of went to a halt. Um, So as far as us, I mean, we kept trying to stay busy with a few of us. Of course, everybody had a social distance and all that stuff. So it's hard to kind of get together as a group. Uh, so we're trying to rebuild from that and move forward from where we left off, um, I think, and still try to get more, get footage and stuff out. Um, got new new editing software and whatnot, so we can try to get more episodes and stuff out for our viewers. And um, trying to really push during the COVID, there's a conservation camp that's local uh, that gets kids into 
that haven't been exposed to any of it, maybe get them exposed. And for the ones that are kind of already exposed, they can go there and kind of add on to their knowledge. Uh, normally they walk out of there with their, their hunting license. And then I think if they go there for a second year, they walk out of there with their archery because you got to have both here in Vermont. Um, and then a third year, they can follow up with that and get their trapping license. Uh, so we're trying to, during the COVID, right before that, we actually were we were going to send a couple youngsters to the camp. Um, boy and a girl. Yeah, we had a boy and a girl that that were chosen, and we were going to, because you got to, it's it costs some money. So we were going to send them, um, sponsored by Ghost 802, the COVID, COVID uh, deal kind of closed the camp down and whatnot. And that wasn't able to happen. So we're going to try to push this year and at least get one into the camp. Um, that's We haven't chosen anybody yet, but that's kind of a, one of our big things. Um, and promote all of our sponsors, working with our sponsors to try to, because everybody took a hit on it. As much as I hate to use it as an excuse, everybody really, I mean, it, it pushed everybody back. Um, so just trying to get everybody back up and rolling and get our stuff going again. We were all, again, even hunting kind of we're busy kind of picking up other things so the hunting kind of went slowed down and i'm guilty myself from trying to clear some of my stuff like we were talking about before so i'd like to get into the woods a lot more this year and try to show everybody kind of what we're doing yeah it's uh it's sad that the uh, covid has uh put the lockdown on a lot of our organizations and community events and things like that and it's just going to further you know if we don't keep up with it and you know get back to the way things was and um, it's going to further push us into a society that does no longer communicate face to face and different things like that. You know, I mean, um, it's awesome to be able to have the technology to do what we're doing right now. But I mean, if I have the opportunity, I'm going to come meet you guys in person. You know, we're going to come hunt together. We're going to come stand around the fire and have a couple beers or, you know, just hang out after the, the hunt, you know, I mean, that's a, that's the thing that we can't get away from is the, the communication and the camaraderie and the, the different things that you have with, with our sport and just our society in general, you know? Yeah, exactly. And actually in a couple of weeks here, we've got, again, it hasn't happened in the last few years, but we've got a big show coming up. Uh, it's actually just outside of Burlington uh, called the Yankee Sportsman's Classic, which is a place where all sorts of different hunting venues uh, and outfitters and, big named hunters and stuff all come together and kind of show their products or show, speak their knowledge. And, um, it all kind of came up quick. So we won't have a booth there or anything this year, but I'm really actually excited to go to it and be able to see everybody, like you were saying, face to face again, and kind of speak to different hunters and, and trappers and fishermen and fisher and women. And it's really kind of something I'm excited and looking forward to just cause it's been, couple of years without it and it's just it's kind of like a weird <laughs> i feel like a little kid again i guess so to speak because <laughs> it's it's time to just kind of move on <laughs> yeah yep i know what you mean for sure uh well i think that's going to do it for this evening guys uh we really appreciate you all coming on and being a part of the show and telling us you know the history behind 802 outdoors and we really thank you all for continuing the hunting heritage and being a part of the community like you all do to uh, further support, you know, the traditions in the hunting and outdoor industry. So we appreciate you guys and uh, thanks for everything. Yes, thank you. And uh, we appreciate you having us on this this podcast and hope to do it again because we're going to leave everybody hanging on why the fox is called the fox. And maybe on the next podcast that we're on, you guys will learn that. Um but if for the folks that don't know, we did yeah, leave that hanging. For the didn't folks we? that don't know, we're on Facebook. Search up Ghost Eight Hundred Two uh, Vermont on Facebook, and you'll you'll find us. Uh, we're on YouTube, so you can again so, search up Ghost Eight Hundred Two Vermont. We're gonna be trying to get our uh, our archery and rifle season episodes out. We got a lot of footage, so it's gonna be broken up into a few different different uh, episodes. Um, and then just again, if people want to check us out. Stay tuned. Uh, we're always showing off and sporting our nature's voice calls and whatnot. Cause you got to, <laughs> you got other, I've never heard anything honestly sound as good as they do. Um, and again, thank you very much. Thank you guys. We appreciate that. Thank you all for the support over the years. We appreciate it. And, uh, like you said there, yeah, we're going to have, uh, we're going to have to have you on again to 
figure out why the fox is the fox i mean <laughs> we forgot all about that but uh you know we get into talking and like like uh, mike said earlier we could sit here and talk about hunting <laughs> stories all night long so but yeah you all do uh facebook videos from time to time i know mike the fox he does them there and i've listened to several of them so again we appreciate you guys coming on and uh we just want to uh thank you for everything again and um that's going to do it for this evening so uh everybody thanks for listening to us on the limb with nature's voice game calls dan did a great job there tonight introducing us since i had uh two blooper reels within 30 seconds so <laughs> since we're not doing it uh two times a week now you kind of get out of the routine but we'll get back into it everybody's starting to get back into things after the holidays and you know how that is after christmas and new years we got to get back into the the swing of things so thank you guys for coming on guys uh be sure to check us out on the limb with nature's voice game calls on facebook we're on uh, spotify apple music uh or amazon music apple uh, podcast google podcasts and about 20 other different outlets so we're on about every outlet that you can think of there for podcasts so give us a share give us a like and a follow and uh we appreciate uh everybody that's listening uh we got plenty of good guests scheduled for this month the remainder of uh january and we're scheduling into february so if you would like to be a part of our podcast get a hold of us on our facebook page or send us an email mike at nature's voice game calls.com or on the limb at nature's voice game calls so thanks again for everybody listening and thanks again 802 outdoors for being a part of it dan you have a good night brother yeah you guys too thanks this segment of on the limb with nature's voice game calls is brought to you by amg network hosting llc a national independent agent for most major telecommunication service providers if your business is in need of internet, phones, credit card processing, let AMG Hosting help you compare options. They work with over 100 national carriers, and they can help you choose the best option for your needs. Our independence means we are loyal to our customers, not a brand or a company. Call us today at 304-608-3653 or visit us at amgnhconsulting.com amgnhconsulting.com phone number again is 304-608-3653 amg network hosting llc